Hey, hockey fans. Hey, howdy. How you doing? Drop the Gloves pod episode number nine. Brought to you by the good folks at Underdog Nutrition. Look, winter's winter's flying by, all right? We already set the candy out for the kids. Uh, before you know it, we smoking a bird. Milk and cookies for Santa. Then the ball drops. Puke a little green beer, and then it's spring break. And then you roll right into summer. So if you want to maintain and keep that healthy physique that you were able to get last summer, you want to carry it through to next summer, you need to check out our friends at Underdog Nutrition. Search them up on Facebook. Like their page. All the information that you need to get in touch with them so they can help you be ready for summer, which, like we went over, it's just basically right around the corner. Big weekend for the boys. They go on the road to Bozeman, pick up a pair of wins. They had a weekend off, took a week off with the show. Hope you all got rested up. We missed you. I missed you. I know you missed us. So it's good to be back together. Now, with that said, boys have another weekend off. So week off, game, week off, and then then we're really into the thick of it for a, a good run for the next couple of months. Great episode today. Talked to a couple guys from Fairbow, Minnesota, Zach Slinger, Leighton Weasler. We'll get to those here shortly as we do every episode. The first thing we're going to do is take a look back. There was some debate, the uh, audio in Bozeman on their hockey TV. It's just the raw, it's the raw audio from the game. I thought about voicing over it, maybe adding a little bit of stick. But when we, when we talked to both Leighton and Zach, which you'll hear after the video, they talked about the guys on the bench and the camaraderie and the, the, the attitude of when you go on the road, you're going to hear that on these on these videos you're going to hear the bench you're going to hear the guys talk i think i think the raw audio is pretty cool it'd be basically just like just like we were there so we're gonna go we're just gonna jump right into it let's take a look back at the wilds weekend that was
All right, we welcome on a very special guest, Leighton Weasler. Am I saying that right? Yeah, you Leighton got it. Weasler, okay. Perfect. Fairbow, not Fairbault. Yep, Fairbault. Minnesota. So that's the French. Is that where you're saying that's come from? Yeah, it's French. Okay, gotcha. I got in a little trouble. I mispronounced that last year. Lisa let me know I was wrong, so I'm just getting that out of the way right now. I apologize to the good people of Fairbow for screwing that up. So before we get into last weekend getting back on the ice, you guys kind of had a weekend off. Uh, it'd been eight, nine weeks in a row. What did you do? What did you do with that weekend off? Uh, you know, we took a little bit of time to relax and head home, see the family, you know, because we don't get to go home for Thanksgiving or anything. So next time we'll see them is Christmas. So it's nice to, we, we got to go home a bit and see everyone. What is something you have to do when, when you go home? Is there any like must do's? Chick-fil-A. Okay, so that- I, I gotta, yep. I gotta go up to Minneapolis, St. Paul area and get some Chick-fil-A. Okay, All so right. where, I don't know where Faribault is then, so how big is it? Uh, Faribault is about 25,000 people. So it's kind of it, similar it, to Gillette. Yeah, size it's wise. about the same size. Okay, so how far are you then from a Chick-fil-A? Uh, probably 40 minutes. It's up in the cities, it, so we just get on the highway and go north for 45 minutes. Okay, so that's not bad. Not bad we, at all. We, we have kicked around there's, well, my wife, she wants to do a Chick-fil-A here in Gillette. Oh yeah. I just well, I think that's a lot more work than she realizes. That she it, realizes oh, yeah. that she wants it to be. I don't think they'd even let us build one here, though. You know, if we wanted to. So yeah. Where are you at w with the season so far? Like it's, uh, you guys go up, you sweep Bozeman, you, you're taking care of business. We've talked about before on here. You you kind of played the lower half of the what has turned out to be the lower half of the division there early these next six weeks or whatever it's all games within the top half of the division you you beat Bozeman to kind of create some separation is that are you guys doing what you want to be doing uh yeah this start's been huge for us and we're just looking to keep it rolling you know we got great falls coming next weekend I think yep. and then Helena coming up quick after that I don't know when but it'll be huge for us to keep the ball rolling and don't lose any momentum we got to carry everything over and Ride the wave. How was the uh, how was the road trip? Kind of the first big one. Uh, they're nice. It's a lot of riding on the bus. You get a little, little tight from sitting on the bus, but they're fun. It's nice to be around the guys for that long, and and especially to get four points and come back. What do you do? Like, are, is there anything in particular that you're doing? Like on the road trip, is there a, a must do that you guys do, or like what are you doing? kind of on on Saturday to kill the time. Uh, Saturday we get up early, you know, get that hotel breakfast. And then we can just hang out. We stretch before lunch, which is around one. But between breakfast and lunch, people take naps, people play some video games, whatever everyone wants what to do. What are you? Are you a gamer? Are you a card player? Uh, are you a double napper? Like, what do you what do you kind of have to do? Sometimes, you know, I like, especially Bozeman, that's a nice town. I, I got an Uber and went and looked, saw the town a little bit. You go, we ran to Target and like, you just... Some guys like to do that too. I'm one of them. Got to get out and, yeah. and get around a little bit. I can't sit around all day. I'm a go find something to do kind of guy. Gotcha. That's kind of cool. I guess that never, I never dawned on me to uh, to kind of get out and go look around and and do stuff like that. So, is there anything in particular? I, I'd ask the guys the last few weeks. Is there anything in particular you have to take with you when you go on a road trip? Is there something like you're gonna be pissed if you leave at, at the billet house or something like that? Oh yeah, you know, uh, I think our first road trip to Yellowstone, I forgot my pillow and blanket, oh, and that's no. huge for the yeah. bus. The, the, our shorter, or that bus ride was four hours. I mean, Bozeman was six, something like that. And without a blanket or a pillow, you're back. Like you just, you can't sleep. Where are and you we, at when you realize you forgot it? Like how far into the trip? Uh, when I got to the rink in my car and oh, we were loading no. the bus, I didn't have time to go get it, and it was just. So who do you sad. billet with then? Like who are you? Uh, I live with the Moonies. My I, my billet brothers are Carson Cooch and Nick Bovey. Del okay, Bovey. so are they? I don't. Are they out in the country or where? Are they uh, at? so we're kind of down by the elementary school a little bit over here. Oh, okay, uh, gotcha. Those storage units kind of over there. Okay, gotcha. So, yeah. But yeah, so you're a little too far to, now see if you yeah. got to the bus early enough though. Right, yeah, I, I called and Cooch already left, so oh, it's just okay. well, unfortunate. See, you'll, never, yep. you'll never forget that again. Right, exactly. exactly. Okay, another thing I've asked all the guys is going back to your early days, kind of how and what got you into hockey. What is your earliest your first and earliest memory of, of playing hockey? 
Um, I think my earliest memory playing hockey has to be going out on the pond that my dad just snowblowed and shoveled off, got it all ready when I was probably three or four, get out there and just start skating around with the neighborhood, with everyone, whoever's out there. It's so much fun. So it was more of a an open atmosphere from the standpoint of you weren't at like a rink or something. Right. Yeah, I started, you start out when, before you can start uh, mini mites or learn to skate in Minnesota. I just started out skating on the pond with my dad, you know, just learning. And then you get into the on ice at the rink stuff. I wonder if that's because... I've lost track now. Several of the guys talk about their first time. They they were scared. Like, they did not want to go. I wonder if the the opportunity to get out and actually do it on a pond or frozen and before going into, because I would assume yeah. as like a four and five-year-old kid going on to an yeah. arena and stuff is probably a little a little bit more intimidating. A little so bit, cool yeah. that's cool that you got to do, kind of start with it outdoors and then move your way in. Yeah, I, I love being out on the pond. I mean... We're looking around out here trying to see, every time I see a pond or lake, I'm like, that we could skate there when it gets cold. Like, that's my favorite part about living in Minnesota when I'm there. Is the outdoor, is skate the wherever. Outdoor? I'm, you're never more than 10 miles from somewhere where people are skating out there. Like, So did you do a lot of, like, is there not just the skating part, but is there actually kind of hockey that you're doing outdoors there? Oh yeah, so the, out on the pond, especially the past, like, five ten years you go out on the pond with your buddies and you bring nets and you just get pick up game like it's like pick up basketball but we'll run three on three hockey It'll so what be, when you say in pond how big of a pond is it big enough like you would be on what would be the size of the ice at spirit hall oh or, it's way bigger so we're playing oh, gotcha, on okay i say pond because it's pond hockey we're playing on lakes, lakes it's gotcha. like it's there i don't know the 40 the 50 Kenyan acre lakes, lakes. they're massive yeah. lakes okay that's nice we don't get that uh well, especially now, I don't know if it's ever going to freeze. Like we had a little snow, I don't know if we're going to get. Hopefully, get yeah, no. Hopefully. I mean, we need to get the. We need to get a. We need to get a little moisture to fill keyhole back up because it's. It got a little low this year, so we need to. We need to get the water back in there and maybe get it frozen. So I've. Uh, in in the in the youth program, some of the the parents, the kids, they go to Riverton. I know they have kind of an outdoor rink that's on underneath like a freaking hay lean to or something and okay. a, a long time ago Sheridan had a little bit of an outdoor rink but I've never experienced like see the outdoor style right. of hockey yep. so I mean I assume that's something you guys did you know a ton and a lot of up there. oh yeah it's it's so crazy it's so much fun uh I have some pictures I can show you after okay. but there it's crazy if you've never skated on a pond or anything you have to it's awesome how does the the youth the the kind of the youth program in, in Faribault work from the standpoint of you, you, you do the mini mites, I assume all the way up through midgets and stuff. And then are you having to travel a long ways? Do you get a lot of hockey in a uh, small area? A lot of hockey in a small area. So you start out, learn to skate, mini mites kind of thing. Just go up the ranks, mites, squirts, peewees, bantams, like here it is. And then after bantams, so that's around, for me it was freshman year. I mean, slinger, it was eighth grade. Okay. But you jump up to varsity or JV. So I played varsity and so did he, and that's pretty much like football here kind of. I mean, we're going not oh, as yeah. far though. I mean, yeah. we had some games, our closest game was 15 minutes to the next rink, and then the arc farthest was two and a half hours. Holy crap, so how many rinks, like legitimate rinks are within like an, well, an hour, because you're saying you're 40 minutes from, so just say 30 minutes to 40 minutes from Faribault. Uh, it's, it'd be almost impossible to count. I mean, Faribault Jeez, has Faribo has a three-on-three three rink, so it's like a half-size rink. Okay. And then we got Shattuck. St. Mary's has a full rink, and then another full rink, and then Faribault's rink. So like three and a half rinks in Faribault, like sheets of ice. So your the youth program is there still the youth stuff and high school? Like, is it? Are can you be playing club and high school at the same time, or do you kind of make a decision, or how does that work? Uh, so you can either play Bantams, or you can play Bantams up until the high school season starts, and then you can play high school after that. But after you play a high school game, you can't drop back down. Okay, so once you go up to high school, you can't go, you back, can't go down. back and play at a Bantam level. Right, gotcha. but you can play Bantams until you play high school. Okay. And then uh, I played juniors in the USPHL. It's the same tier as here. Okay. It was just about 20 minutes from my house, the Steel County Blades. And okay. uh, I could do that up until high school started, and then I'd go back, and then I'd go back to the Blades after high school ended and finish the season with them. Gotcha. And I really, that was a nice opportunity. That's a lot of hockey. That you is a lot of hockey. I love it. That's, 
as important as it is kind of developing and you guys when I've told all the, the guys you're all very humble but you guys are you're, you're playing at a level for the, the I have millions tens of hundreds of thousands of kids that play hockey I mean that the junior level stuff it's definitely a step up we got to see it it's no knock or, or anything but even like the club level wise uh, we, I had conversations with a couple guys that worked about it today that went and watched when, when Wyoming brought the comp team up in Montana State, it's still, you guys are a, a substantially faster product than that. And that's, I think, one is, is a lot of tribute to Ethan and getting and, and getting good players here. But at, at what age did you kind of recognize that, that you were starting to excel and you really wanted to focus on hockey? Um, I don't think sophomore year, I really broke out in high school and I started okay. playing well. And then the year after that was when the Blades asked me to start playing with them. And so I was 16, just turned 16, okay. and started playing in juniors. And that was when I was like, I can, if I just keep working, I can keep playing. It'll be. Gotcha. And that's the goal. I just play as long as I can at the highest levels I can, right? Who was probably the most influential, whether it was uh, uh, families, dad, mom, or, or coaching kind of when you were growing up? Is there one person in particular that kind of had the most influence on you? Um, I think both my parents helped a lot, but my dad especially. He uh, he played Division One hockey. He was a goalie at St. Cloud State. Oh, there you go. Okay, sick. Okay. And then he ended up playing pro in Colorado. He played for the Colorado Eagles, okay. which is now very, their very AHL familiar team. Familiar with the Eagles. That's where yep. we. My sister actually worked for them when she was in college in Fort Collins. So. Yeah, he, yeah. he played there for a while, and that was when I was, I don't remember any of it, but yeah. it was seeing that what he's done, and now he coached me from forever. I, I don't think I've had a different coach other than Ethan Hayes. But. Was, there any, was there any thought of going yourself? Because that's, I mean, the, the goalies we've had, uh, I, I think they're batshit crazy. Uh, we were talking you, uh, you 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 got a little hitch in your giddy up from blocking a shot, uh, and it doesn't matter at, at whatever level. They, uh, my daughters, the high school girls team, they started this weekend, and uh, we're uh, we're in Pinedale. They have a, a young lady that's 12 or 13, and uh, we got a couple girls that'll that'll chuck it. And dude, she took one right off the dome, and it yeah, didn't even and then it doesn't, like, doesn't doesn't stop me at all. And I'm like, there's no. First time ever on a bench. I've been doing it for like six years. I caught one in the side of the head, and I don't ever want to go on the bench again. Man. So, right. But it's was there any was there any thought to, uh, to uh, try? It? I'm sure you tried it. I actually I played goalie until about I'd say my first year of Pee Wee's was my last year. I think okay. it was right around then. So 11, 12 okay. ish. Why? What made this like? What made you decide to make the switch? Uh, actually, I was playing goalie against my dad in a like a parent player scrimmage oh, at the end of the year okay. and I went down and it hit me right in the top of the knee and it left a puck you could see the words on the side of the puck on my knee mm -hmm. and that was when I decided I wasn't a goalie anymore you yeah you don't want to do it anymore yeah. no because that's uh our you know back to the girls the the the, the young lady that, that goalies the girls to speak to her she is she is very soft-spoken and and when she gets her gear and stuff on, it's like a totally, like, I mean, yep. there's there's two or three years ago when she was doing it, there were there were some girls that, uh, I mean, they would just smack the shit out of it, and she never, she just bam, bam, bam. Nope. So there's, yeah, there's there's definitely something, there's definitely something wrong there. The goalies are uh, definitely weird. Yeah, they're their own little, but hey, you, you got to have them. Yeah, you know, my little brother's a goalie, and he's playing right now. He's playing U16s in Des Moines, Iowa, Okay. and he's crazy. He's nuts. How many siblings? Uh, little brother, 16, Kay. playing in Iowa, and then little sister back home, Joel. Okay, so you're the oldest. Yep, nice. and then McLean, the goalie, actually might be coming out here for a couple weeks because oh, they, have, they have a few weeks off, and we need a goalie because Bob's hurt. How is he? That's, I haven't been back to he, see uh, He was on the ice today, okay. just his track suit and skates and gloves and helmet, but okay, well, he's, good. he's back on the ice. He's, good. he's doing well. Yeah, no, it was, uh, that was a couple weeks ago when they come and told us that, that there's something that happened to his hand, and I was yep. like, well, that's... In that's warm -ups. A, Yeah, that's what, but I mean, pucks are flying around and shit. Well, that's another yeah. thing we had to go with a couple of young girls, brand new. Uh, it was just a little five-minute warm-up at the, at the kind of the high school level. 
well, that last minute, the goalie gets out of the way and the team kind of come around and starts wrapping, you know? Yep. Well, the, the two the two younger first-year girls, they go and get, the one ends up behind the net. Oh, and, yeah. never good, never good. <laughs> her, her chin's about bar level, you know? Yep. So I tell her, no, when they say you want to, let's, we're not going to pick pucks up yet, you know? Yeah. So it's, yeah, yep. it's just, you know, shit you don't know until you don't know and you get out there. Until so. you find it out the hard way. Yeah, and that's when you know. Take one up off the dome, so kind of moving forward like you said it's it's I, you don't want to jinx it or get too far ahead of yourself but i think things are setting up uh it's going to be some some cool games here the next six weeks yeah have for you, sure have you been have you been on good hockey teams before like is this something you've uh, been a part of i've i've never been on a team like this uh okay. th- this is what it when Listen you say this like what is it when when you talk about this this group of guys the feeling we can kind of feel it watching and the energy and stuff but we're not into it like you guys right. are what uh, is what is that that is this you're there's about? there's a whole other feeling it's indescribable when you get a team that like us going and uh, you, you almost feel unstoppable we're just we just got to keep going we stick to our game it, it feels amazing and a lot of respect for the coaches putting together a, a squad like this. It, how did you end up good. here? That's what I was going to ask you a little when you were talking about uh, the the USPHL. How did how did you end up in Gillette? Uh, so last year I was in Steele County, and then around February, early February, I played about half a season there, and I was just not happy with how I was playing. I needed a change of scenery and everything, and I texted coach Hayes and he was like you can come out I'm not promising anything just work hard come out and how I, did you know him like how did you uh, how did that connection happen how did you know like how the hell did you know about Gillette uh so actually <clears throat> coach Shaw saw me okay. at a tournament it was a showcase up in Minnesota when I was in high school okay and they sent me a tender and I tendered with Gillette uh, a year and a half ago now and so they had that and then an when I decided that I was done and I needed to move out here, I just signed and Hayes brought me on and I played right away. It nice. Was, what was what was the first thoughts? I was like to get your guys's your take. Like, what's your? So you had already signed before you showed up in Gillette. Yeah. So you were stuck. I was, yeah. Were I, I mean, you can leave, but I wasn't leaving. Gotcha. I, I was so here. What did you? What was? It, what was your impressions? Uh, first impressions. We have the best facilities for a junior, like especially tier three junior hockey league this team that I've ever seen. We've got the rec that we get to use and all we have to do is help coach some kids twice a week. I love it. And then our rink is super nice. I like we just have the best facilities, the best I love this town and like I, I just extremely happy. Excited. So the support school, I know that, that last that last set of home games that Saturday night where there were I can't remember if it was six, seven hundred people. Oh yeah, like that's, that's that's huge. You, uh, you Steel guys can County feel that. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. We love it. Uh, Steel County pulled probably fifty to hundred every game. Okay. So we could hear them, but it wasn't a lot. Here, it's crazy, especially like uh, the, the away games too. We can hear you guys there, and yeah. there, it's so awesome to just hear the support and even like everything. All the yelling is amazing. It, it really gets us going. It gives a little extra step in our skate. Now, how much fun? And this, this is getting ahead a couple weeks a little bit, but I. I know Helena, I mean, they draw, which I don't know, I, it seems wild. 1,200 seems like a, that's a big-ass number. Yeah, that seems that, a little pushing it. It, it might but... be inflated. I mean, inflation's up right now. That might be part of it. But their place is, it does look full. Yep. So is that something that you guys are starting to look forward to a little bit, is, is going up somewhere where I assume it's going to be you guys one and two and maybe both sides undefeated? If not, you're both going to be one and two in points. Yep. Is that is it fun to go into someone else's place and, and kind of a hostile? Uh, I I really like being the bad guy on the ice. Like when okay. you when you score and it goes silent, it, that's the funniest thing ever. I think yeah. on the ice. But as of right now, we're not looking that far ahead. We need to focus. We're looking to we're looking at Great Falls right now. Baby steps, right? Yeah. Get them take care of game one, game two, and then we can look forward. Nice. Well, I I'm looking forward. Uh, the girls, which. Uh, it, it's nobody. It's just the way that the schedule falls. I I've never went to a, a an away game. Like I yep. catch the games here. If the girls were home that weekend, I would go to Helena because I think that's gonna be. I think yeah, it's gonna be, it's awesome. gonna be they, a barn burner. It's gonna be they, awesome. And they seem to run a good. Uh, they've also started doing some stuff with with YouTube, and they they run a good social media, and 
I do think they have a good fan base and they get rowdy and that's oh, just yeah. a, that's a fun environment to go. But yeah, I will definitely have it up. Uh, that was it. one thing this weekend. So and I, and I uh, text Coach Hayes. I think it was Friday night after our game in yeah, because Friday was the tight one yep. for you guys. So Friday night we are in a hotel in Pinedale, Wyoming, and we're in the like breakfast area of the bar on my phone watching we've got it on hockey tv perfect and it's funny where a couple people get okay i mean we're all hockey people but not necessarily right. you know that involved or not everyone within the group follows the the junior team that heavily right but if it's a good tight hockey game it's fun to watch you have a bunch of people gather so it was pretty cool to just be sitting in pinedale having beers after the game oh yeah and, and be able to guys. watch yeah so that was you you're you're drumming up more and more interest so that's yeah that's that's it's really pretty cool. cool and then i think you're going to see people and then you guys are also going to start having the youth hockey that starts you'll have those teams stay in that that especially yep. saturday night into sunday they're coming over and playing so yeah. okay last thing i'll let you go you mentioned it uh a little bit ago about liking you don't have to say it because it's uh Lasseter already said last week he hates kids, so it's it's about to say. But nice. do, do you really? Hey, he was honest. Like he says, yeah, he that, goes that, and does that, it. That's totally like, lassie like, too. I don't like being around the. That's totally the lassie too. But you do like, like that's. I don't know if you guys know how much influence, and and maybe you do. But those yeah. those kids, man, they they just look at you guys and their eyes light up. So. That is something you enjoy. Is oh yeah, I, I love doing that stuff, and we do a lot of it back in Minnesota. Like the high school team does a lot of the same stuff. But I just remember when I was that that height, that age, looking up to the big junior guys that are helping us skate, and all the high school guys. You, I still like, I still like look back, and I'm like, those guys are really good. Maybe I don't know if they actually were, but when I was that age, those guys were the best players in the world. Yeah, really and, good and really cool. Yep, and now I just try to be kind of a role model for kids that age, right? Not, well, it's it's that's cool, and it's nice to have you guys here in town. That it's, it's I know. Not every not every town is so lucky. They they'll they, there's been some shithead stuff happen, and, and that I can't one anymore and Dwayne don't matter me but it it happens you know what I yep. mean so that's and you guys are you're you're a good group of young men to have around and it's yeah from I the think community standpoint it, it's cool to have you guys here and it, it's I mean it's it's fun to have you guys here through the winter and it and hell it gives us something to do through the winter up here because there's not a whole bunch to do so having a good hockey yeah. team is, is very cool so dude I appreciate you taking the time yeah thank you and uh enjoy your last weekend off here yeah cool. I we will for sure <laughs>
straight open with each other saying that we're not doing as good as we should be or we need to pick it up and we'll tell each other that and it usually works. And it's not a deal, no one's getting their feelings hurt. Nope. Like it's a team, the, the, uh, the team camaraderie and everything where... Yeah, we all have one goal and it's win the game and we all understand that and sometimes there's facts that you don't like and you have to face them. And that's part of life. Yep. That's just shit you're going to need to hear whether whether it's on the job, whether it's in your marriage, whether whatever. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta you got to sit down and have, a, have an honest conversation yeah. with yourself. Have you been on or played on a, a hockey team this good before? Like uh, it, not even close. I think this is the best team I've ever been on. I mean, our high school team was decent, but it wasn't nothing like this. How much fun is it? Like, how much fun is it to be like the big bad dude that walks in when you go to Bowman or Cody? Like, does it, it's, what's it feel like walking into an arena knowing you're just, they're looking at you guys like you're the, the big bad wolf? I, I think it's great. I mean, we're the we're the team to take down right now with Helena. It's us two, and we're looking for that first loss. And all the other teams are trying to give it to us, and we're just fighting it, and trying to get as far as we can. I uh, I noticed. So what you guys kind of make it's pain in the ass when I started doing it, or I probably wouldn't have done it. Uh, we always do the which has already happened. You guys saw this the wild weekend that was where I, I go off uh, hockey TV screenshot, cut up all the goals. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is easy if you score three when you guys are scoring nine to 12 that takes all day yeah but there was no commentary on the game this weekend so it was just raw just raw video and to hear you guys after the goals is comical and they'll, they'll, everyone is already going to know how we did it I haven't decided whether to uh, do something silly and make my own commentary kind of over the goals or just let it go out with the raw because the raw audio is cool that you guys make an, an obscene amount of noise yeah. after the goals are scored. So is that something else too on the bench that, that you guys are always having a good time? Yeah, we got to have a good time. If we're not having a good time, we're not going to be playing well. It's, you have to have fun to play good. On the, the road trips, what are you doing then on that? Uh, are you getting an Uber and going around town? Are you playing cards? Are you double napping? Kind of what? What is your... What is your Saturday routine there on those road trips? It's honestly just what I'm feeling. I might, I might take a nap or I might just go explore the town. When we went to Yellowstone, it was a great view. Like, I went out and looked around for a bit and saw the mountains. Over in Cody? Yeah. Yeah, that's our favorite. That's my favorite place anywhere kind of in the Midwest. My wife and I, we, we love going over to Cody. So that's a, that's, a, that's a beautiful part of the world. What do you have to have with you? Is there anything, anything kind got, of specific? I got an Oregon, Oregon Ducks blanket that I've had with me since eighth grade. I bring it on every road trip. Okay, why? Where did that come from? Uh, my mom ordered a wild, a Minnesota wild blanket, and they sent the wrong one. And at the time, I was starting to get into college football, and I was watching Oregon, and it just helped me fall in love with Oregon football. Gotcha. So you're you're a big Ducks guy, yeah. big Pac-12 guy. Yep. Okay. We won't talk college football. You're bigger than tougher than me, so I won't share my my back twelve thoughts. So, all right, all right. Uh, going back to younger, the the same thing I've asked all of the guys. Like, what was your earliest first memory of playing hockey? Uh, Learn to skate at the rink. It was just pushing. We didn't have the fancy pushers like we do now. We just okay. had old chairs. You had to push okay. around. Okay. Just old school chairs that, and I just remember pushing around in the in the zone and learning to skate. Started there. Did you love it the first time, or were you? Yeah, mom. Okay. Mom says I took off right away, but I think I struggled skating at first. Well, mom, they always think you're just on the best thing ever. Yeah, well, junior year. But I, I fell in love it. with it. I couldn't get enough of it. I still can't. Did you play any other sports growing up, or was was hockey kind of your thing? Football, baseball, and hockey. Gotcha. Okay. But, what? So, what was the what was the football? Where I'm guessing, like. Linebacker? Everywhere. Everywhere. If Go there on. was an injury somewhere, they put me there. I, mean, okay, so I could play everywhere. Nice. Did you enjoy it? I loved it. Okay. I had a great time doing it. I had to choose either football or hockey this year because I'm still in high school. And okay. I chose hockey and came out here. It was a tough decision, but I think it was the right decision. No, I do too, man. That's 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 cool. What what goes into to kind of making that decision? Or when, when, do, you, when do you first decide that – you had to make that decision uh, back to the last hockey season when I was finishing up my junior year of high school we found out that my high school coach was gonna resign okay and then our goalie was leaving so I didn't know what was gonna happen with the team so I opened my options out and 
I talked to Hayes, and then I decided to come out here because the high school hockey team was up in the air and wasn't a good uh, outlook. Yeah, no, you don't want to do something you don't. I mean, when you what for what you guys are trying to do is uh, you don't want to be in a situation you don't want to be in. Yeah, like that's it's no it's no different than anything you're gonna do in life, and that's sometimes you have to make hard decisions, and that's you know. That's the way shit's going to go. Uh, it wasn't an easy decision. It took me about two weeks to figure out what I really wanted to do. Okay. How, how Hayes, then? How do you... I always find it fascinating how you guys... Well, we got guys from all over the country yeah. right up in Gillette, Wyoming. So when you're, when you're weighing your options there, how do you go from weighing your options between playing football or playing hockey to, okay, I'm going to play junior hockey in Gillette, Wyoming? Uh, so what really happened was that I was talking to Larry about it and then he okay. said talk to Hayes and see what can happen and I did and I felt like it was the best option so I came out here and worked my worked my way onto the lineup and now I'm out here playing nice so what how, what's how does the school situation work then so you're a senior yes so where do you go to, are you online or are you at the, one of the high schools? I'm online through gotcha. Minnesota gotcha so going doing that back through there yep. and then doing your hockey here yep what is that what does your day look like there then? Uh, wake up, do some homework, go to practice, and then if we have any events, like, uh, it? learn to skate, we have to work that. With the children? Yep. If I'm not doing that, I'm usually back at home doing more school work, trying to get most of it done so I can get a job out here. Do you like it out here? Yes. Do you want to stay out here? Yeah. Like, you like the West or what? I like the West. I've always wanted to come out here. Okay. In Montana, Wyoming area. Just Always like the views and everything. Nice. So when you had made the commitment to Gillette, had, had, had you not been out here yet? No, I have not. Okay, so what first impression when you get here, what do you think? Or as you're driving out here, you're liking it. Yeah, I'm liking it. I've been, I've been the, the farthest I've been was Black Hills. Okay. And that's a boring ride from Minnesota. It's just yep, nothing. I've done it. Yeah. And after the Black Hills, it was just something different, something I've never seen before. And I thought it was really cool to me. Nice. So what do you want to do then? You, you mentioned staying out here. Like, what do you want to do when you grow up? What's, I don't know. What's I've the plan? I've thought about doing sheriff and cop stuff. Okay. But I've also thought about going nursing. Okay. Or just some welding or plumbing. My I, options are all over the place oh, right now. And those, are, those are things, all four of those, that's stuff you can do anywhere in the world, really, yeah. if you want to go do that. So, no, that ain't, hell, that ain't a bad, that ain't a bad gig at all. Growing up there in Faribault, did you have anybody that had the most influence on you? Like, was there any, any coaches when you were younger that, that kind of stick out? Uh, I think my parents, my mom always pushed me to be my best in just any situation. And she loved to push me for hockey. Uh, when I was younger, she said she'd always purposely make me mad because I'd always play better if I was mad. Okay. Because I would take my energy out yeah. on the other team. So she always make me mad before games and then come back and tell me how good I did. And she was always there for me. Stoke the fire, like spin you in Tasmanian devil yep. and send you out there to, to, to just go wreck Exactly somebody. how it was. Nice. That seems to be something that with the team too that you guys, uh, you you watch over. I know going back through the stats, like for, uh, you had a 25 minute one. Uh, the 25 minute one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that's, I mean, and, and there were a couple last weekend that were, Dirty, but lowercase d dirty. Not big d dirty, but kind of where you guys grabbed them a little bit and were like, hey, yeah. other than the one with Bovey, which where Bovey tried to follow the guy into the penalty box. I don't know if you've seen that. The video's funny as hell where like, they're taking him to the penalty box and Bovey's just going to follow the guy in. And the ref was like, no, you need to go over here. Like it's you, He was just going to go fight the guy, I think, in the penalty box. But how kind of how does that work? On, on the, the standpoint of, of letting everybody know, hey, no, we're not going to let you do that to where, okay, I need to go hit this guy in the mouth. Um, it's usually most of, like, my penalty was protecting my player or teammate. Yeah. Like, the guy just was beating on him. I'm not going to allow that to happen. You got to protect my players first. And coach understand that I had to protect them. And I sent a message for the rest of the game, and they stopped playing shitty and yeah, fucking around. Yeah, doing shit to your guys. Yeah. Do you – is – I in uh, – a couple of the guys I've asked, is there a, uh, you might find this hard to believe, I've never been in a fight in my life, mm -hmm. other than with my little brother, but is there a method, like is there, when when you go over and you have to 
tell this guy to stop being a dick to your teammate. Like, do you go in there with any sort of a strategy? No, I just you, go at it. <laughs> just go in there. Just Whatever happens, it. happens, and hopefully I'm on, I'm on top. Gotcha. How, how, how many would you say good, legitimate hockey fights have you had? I haven't had any. Okay, so just the one. Just that, I don't even really count that as a fight. I'm it was just a, a talking to. I hit the guy and then I got kicked out. Okay. <laughs> so it was very, very one-sided. It was. And, and very fast. The, uh, we're recording this on uh, Tuesday night. I don't even know what it is. It's November something. It's single digits still, I think. Ninth, so almost double. November 9th. Uh, today was the, the Team Tuesdays or whatever. Yep. Uh, did you guys do that again today? Yeah. Okay. Hey, a couple of the guys have said that's the best hockey so far that w- that's being played. I mean, that that's that's the good stuff. Do you do you look forward to that, like on days like today, and, and kind of what goes into that? I look forward to it sometimes, but sometimes I think we need to work on some other things because we have a short schedule. We okay. gotta work gotcha. on some things to prepare for the game. But I think it gets the guys going and helps us have better practices on Wednesdays and, and Thursdays. It's, and it's competitive, like. It is a very competitive. It is very that's competitive. Not being, that's not being oversold. No, just like on just it, how competitive it is. Yeah, and it carries into the games and it helps a lot. Nice. The little kid stuff. Are you big on Are you big on on working with the learn to skate and stuff? Uh, it depends on how my day is going. Like mo- okay. most, if I'm having a bad day, I don't want to be there. But if I'm having a mediocre day or a good day, I'm having a great time out there. Back home in Minnesota, when Throughout high school, I'd always help during the summers, go help the youth and just help them practice and hang out. And they loved it. And I love doing it here too. When you go back to Faribault, is there anything that you, that you must do? Do you have them? Are you driving up to, to Chick fil A? Or like, what is there? Is there something when you go home to visit family that you have to do when you're there? Not really. I don't really have anything that. I need to do. I just like going back and seeing hi, saying hi to everybody and spending as much time as I can with them. If there was one thing from there that you could bring to Gillette, like uh, not well, not not family, you yeah, know, mom and dad, but if there's a, is there like one thing about the community or or, or one thing uh, culturally that we don't have here that you guys have there that you kind of wish you could bring out here? I don't know. I think Gillette and Faribault are very similar. They're almost identical. It's just you guys have more restaurants than we do. That's the only thing different. And that's crazy because that is, there's just we. My favorite thing when I when I get to go uh, out on our road trips and stuff is, and maybe we're just because it's because we've been here so long that the, uh, yeah, the eating out thing uh, it seems to get. You have the same choices all the time. Yeah. So we're we're on a big pizza grill kick right now, so that's that's what's taking care of us. Looking forward, maybe the next the next six weeks we keep talking about kind of the build up to Helena. You guys don't want to look past Great Falls, yep. but these next four to six games where it's it's kind of around Robin among the top three. Excuse me, in the frontier, where kind of where's your mindset going into that? Uh, just I I gotta take one shift at a time for myself. I don't like to look one game ahead. I'm a guy that's who's our next opponent, and that's who we gotta focus on. But and that's probably the best. That's probably the best way to go about yeah. it. That's probably what Ethan wants you guys doing. Yep. So uh, last weekend off. So weekend off, Bozeman. This weekend coming up right now. Do you have anything planned? You guys went home the first weekend. The off. first weekend off. So what are you going to do anything this weekend? I'll probably get ahead in school. Hopefully finish it. I got three out of my six classes done already. I'm hoping to finish the last three. And then. You get those done, and when do you have to start back up then? I'll be done with school. I'll be graduate high school. You'll be school. done, done? I'll be high, yeah, oh. graduate high school. Well. And then I can hopefully get a job out here and make some cash. Nice. Congratulations on that. Thank Which you. the meme said, congratulations on finishing the easiest part of your life. Yep. So, but that's, no, that'll be cool. What do you, you talked about kind of the four options out here work-wise. Like, what is it? If you, if everything works out the way you want it, what will you be doing here in, in a month? I honestly don't even know. Okay, whatever comes up. Find a job somewhere for right now and play hockey. Nice. Man, I appreciate you guys taking some time. I know you're busy. I know yeah. you practice. I know it's an off week, so you had probably 10,000 other things you guys wanted to do. But I, I just had you. homework. That's about it. Yeah, and that's over. <laughs> you can do it. You can, you can do it, it anytime. Things. Exactly. So I appreciate you taking some time. Yeah, thank Thanks, you. Man. Good luck. Thank you. All right, I cannot thank Zach 
and late enough taking some time coming down to the uh, brewery chatting with us for a bit there too a couple of another couple of cool young men that we had uh, had the opportunity to sit and chat with before we get out of here got a little bit of a uh, little bit of business to take care of with the uh, awards that were handed out the bauer na3hl frontier division star of the week Gillette Wild forward Declan Young. Gillette Wild forward Declan Young, 20, took over the NA3 OHL scoring lead with a huge weekend as Gillette picked up a weekend road sweep of Bozeman. The 6'10, 180 pound native of Fergus Falls, Minnesota, had seven points and two wins, including five goals, two assists, and a plus eight rating. On Friday, Young had a goal in a 5 3 win. On Saturday, four goals including the game winner and two assists and a 9-4 win for the season. Young currently leads the NA3HL in scoring with 38 points in just 16 games. That's our guy right there, Declan Young. Then we take a look at the points standings, where we sit in the frontier division. You see right there, Gillette, Wild. Top the division, 16 and 0, 32 points. Sitting just there above the big horns. We'll see in a couple weeks. Great Falls there in third, who Gillette will welcome to town in a couple weeks after the bye weekend. And then Bozeman there in fourth, as you can see, creating some separation from the bottom half of the top half of the frontier division. We had talked about wanting to be able to do that here over the, uh, the last month and moving on maybe through, through the next six weeks here. So we're gonna take another week off. There's no hockey to show you. There's no reason to, to really put a, to put a show together. So I know we're, you're getting one show in three weeks, but everyone's resting up, uh, taking some time, watching the, the youth hockey has got started here in Gillette. We've been running around doing that, but Big thanks to Big Loss Meadery for hosting us. Even if I, uh, some of these I have to do virtual, a uh, little bit of situation at work, having to stay a little later, stuff broke, but we're knocking this out and getting her done anyway. Still got the chance to sit down there, talk to the guys, uh, knock back a couple of the Irish Reds. Was hoping to stay for trivia night, didn't get to maybe next week. With that being said, thank you for taking some time. If you liked the show, like the page if you loved the show share it tell your friends about it we appreciate you guys taking some time check in on us have a good night